This is Curtis coming at you from Ace Per Head Studios once again, covering 2021 NFL season. Part two of my study of the Titans versus the Dolphins is here. I want to do the whole game, both sides of the ball, the whole thing. And as I was doing it, I realized it would have taken me four to five hours worth of film to really do it justice. So I covered the first half of all the Dolphins' offensive snaps because it seems to be that's the majority of what people are talking about. And I did, for Titans fans who, who might be watching, I did one drive of Tannehill. I'm probably going to dig into this tape much deeper in the offseason, maybe even next week. But when, you, when I study film, there's so much going on. I remember a story about Bill Belichick had someone come in and said, I want you to take this one play and write. And he basically said you could spend like 15 minutes to half an hour writing about every play. And it's the truth. There's so much going on just about every play. So I spent a lot of time on these plays, but I really don't even feel like I dug deep enough. But I try to create enough so people who maybe aren't as savvy with football would get into it. I wanted to create the tools to show you so you can go back and watch the film and see these same things over and over again. But the main focus I had was the Dolphins offense. Um, I really wanted to show how the Titans offense and offensive line really supported their team. I wanted to show how the Dolphins defense really did a pretty good job. That situations dictated some of their failure. It wasn't just that, you know, they suck. But since everybody's talking about Tua, 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 and for me, it's about the offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. I showed as much tape of this offensive line in the first half in as detail, as deep a detail as I could. And I think by the end of it, it's gonna be very clear. The Titans were able to shut down our running game while playing pass coverage off in a nickel. That alone creates an impossible situation for any team to win, especially in bad weather. I'm not a fan of Tua, like in the sense that I wanted the Dolphins to draft him. I like the kid. I thought it was, so I thought it was ridiculous that we drafted a guy with a blown out hit. I wanted Burrow. I didn't want Herbert. I heard the rumors about his personality. I was like, ah, you know, I was patient. I was willing to be patient. Let's wait till next year. But I'm a fan of the kid, and I'm a fan of telling the truth when it comes to film. And the kid's grown on me. Last year, I was like, whoa. And then when I did an off-season study, I realized the kid wasn't healthy. And then he came out and said he wasn't healthy, didn't know the playbook, and it all made sense. This year, I've been judging him on how he played and dismissing last season. But all I can do since second week of preseason is focus on the offensive line. And when you see this film... Some surprising to come out into his play. Not that he played great. Two fumbles, a couple of missed passes, two, I think, bad decisions. But there were some really good pass plays in it, and it was loads of pressure on him, and we were unable to run against the nickel. So here's the film. There's a lot of talk about what the primary problem is. But when you see this film, I don't understand how you could possibly not be blown away blown away by the absolute ineptitude of this offensive line. But that's for you to judge. I'll be looking for your comments. I'll be looking to question my own evaluations through your evaluations. And I look forward to hearing it. So let's take a look at the film and see what we see. All right, so the very first play from scrimmage, you're going to see what the Titans are going to do and what they're going to show you. Now, Dolphins open up, three wides, one tight end. Titans, they come out in a nickel. They have two linebackers, four linemen. Some of them might be linebackers, but you know what I mean. And 24, who's 190 pounds, he's going to play that third linebacker spot and be in the box. Notice the corners, they're off. Notice the safeties. They've got a good 10 yards off the ball, and they're eyeing the quarterback. Zone coverage. They shift according to the motion. 
but not much really changes. RPO, there's only two receivers going out. Look, look what you got here. All right, so you see there's two receivers going at the routes. Somebody's sitting underneath as an outlet route, and there's seven guys on two receivers. And Tua puts the ball in a tight window and gets the completion. It's a pretty good pass, tight window. See the protection here. And notice already this penetration. 48's already gotten in there. And this is a pretty quick throw. So they're rushing only four guys. Eichenberg gets beat. Pressure gets in there. It's not going to affect the play, but this is a continuing theme. Okay, we're back. Dolphins come back now into two tight end set. Two tight ends. This is considered big. What are the Titans doing? They're sitting in nickel. Same thing. Corners playing off, safety's hiding the quarterback, and a 190-pound guy, number 24, sitting in the box. Runs a little screen with only four men rushing. Nice set of blocks there. Nice play. But Jackson goes down the field. Play comes back. Second and long. Second and long. So what do you bring out? What package do you bring out if you're the Dolphins? Two tight end set. This is not your second and long set of most NFL teams. But as I said, we run 12 personnel, 60 plus percent of the time, and the rest of the NFL runs at 22. So as it should be, Dolphins crack off a run, nice block, but this is big versus nickel. Nice, not a great run. It's okay, run, big hole. But it's big versus nickel. This is what we should have seen on a rain-slicked field all day. But we won't, and you'll see why. The Titans have to respect the double tight ends, the tight end going motion that brings the flow to the right and isolates 54. But you got to double up both those DTs with Four linemen. Jesse Davis does a nice job blocking, and 54 misses it, gets caught in the scrum, and Duke breaks out. This was all about big versus nickel and a poor angle by the linebacker. But this is what's expected. Come back, you got first down. Dolphin fans are feeling good. They're back in two tight end sets. And look where the Titans are, back in nickel. Two receivers, two tight ends versus five DBs. Little inside run here. Think you're going to get it again? And the offensive line doesn't block. The line of scrimmage does not move. Duke trips, and bang, that's it. They just stopped our big formation with their nickel, with a 190-pound guy. So let's check the actual blocks and who screwed it up. This should never happen on a consistent basis. Once in a while, maybe. All right, so again, we got to do, we got to double. Everybody, we got to double. And there was a nice little inside move there with Davis and Hunt. Hunt gets off and makes his block. Duke gets a little nervous and bends it wide, kind of like what I said in my last, uh, Film study against the Saints. He does the same thing. Got a little nervous inside. No hole. Then he's got to bounce it back. It goes nowhere. See right here, he misses the concept that Hunt's supposed to come off, and he bends it back, and there's nowhere to go. And you can see here, Jackson just, and Dita just can't move anybody. Just put us in second and long, because we couldn't run on their nickel in our big formation. So second and long in the rain. And then we'd call this play. And what happens? Nothing. Why? Because they're sitting in zone. They bring the outside linebacker on the edge. 
mean, what is Jackson doing? The most critical block is 41. Eichenberg chips and goes to the next level. Jackson, for some inexplicable reason, decides to let 41, the most dangerous person on the field for this play, to go to get some big line and backside because he's afraid what? He's going to catch Waddle? Now you're in third and real long. And now they've got a dime. Got three wide receivers. One tight end against the dime. And where are you throwing this football? Now, if you go back, you'll see that if he had time, he might have been able to hit Parker down on the bottom right here. But the pocket's already crumbling. Right there's the hole. But he can't sit there and wait on it. He comes back to the other side to look to see if he can got something over there. But watch how the Titans handle it. You got two on four on the top and two on three on the bottom. And he sees it's not looking good. The safety's eyeing him. Parker could break free and maybe he could catch that but not with a safety sitting square watching you like that. You have to come back when he gets parallel with the safety. He comes back to the other side, nobody's there. And Jackson and Eichenberg are already getting beat. Dita's getting beat, and you get a sack. You got a dime going against three wides. What was two supposed to do on that one? All right, so now look at the difference between the Dolphins' defense and the Titans' defense. They got six guys on the line of scrimmage, three hovering over the line of scrimmage at three yards, and then two deep. Why? Because they know the Titans have a good offensive line and have to respect the run. They have to respect the run. Titans 76 is a fierce pass blocker. Very rarely do I see Raekwon Davis getting moved out like that. And look at the swap. 76 passes off to 60, and then gets to the second level. I mean, the play gets broken down and doesn't succeed because Wilkins gets in there, but you could see some serious run-blocking talent. And, you know, when everything's going to come together, which it does, that's when you get the big run, which eventually happens. But Davis was moved out, brilliant blocking, swapped, and then Wilkins, who's done very good this season, is the main reason... Why this plays dies. Second and long, same look. They run the play action, but look how tight that window is. Baker dropped just enough to close that window. A good job dropping, and it was hard to fit it in there, and he had to throw it behind him. You have five guys rushing, not four, and look at that pocket. Really, Tannehill should have dumped it off to the running back. He was, he was trying to go big. So you come back in third and long. Now you can see right here, coverage is Excellent. You got three guys against six guys. That's not good chance to get a completion. There's pressure inside, and Tannehill's got to get it off. Dolphins are in come back. They come in a pistol look. Two tight ends set. Titans have decided to come out a little big. They're in a 4-3 look. Do a little play action rollout. Some early penetration. But at this point, where is he going to go with that ball? He's got to put it at that angle. If he puts it too flat, that corner is going to get it. That corner will pick that thing off. So the only place he can put it is here. That was an excellent throw. Look at this. He got six on three in zone coverage. Dolphins come back in the pistol. Two tight ends against... 4-3, they got five guys on the line of scrimmage. The linebacker's playing like an elephant look. You can see right here, Davis can't hold the block. But again, Duke should have hit it straight up. He's trying to make some big play. Anytime as a runner, your shoulders are parallel with the line of scrimmage, you're mostly not going doing well. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't being patient enough. So you see here, double inside. They get a little action going there, and he should have just put it right up in that hole. But he tries to get outside, but it's not going to work because you got three on two. 
And then it also, the DT, the DN had, uh, the DT had leverage on Davis. So it was a poor run by Duke. Just got to note it, on the NFL level, you just got to take stuff. Take whatever you can. You can't be trying to hit a home run. Inside, right there, it would have been a bang play, but you might be able to break that tackle, pick up two or three. Instead, the apparel, you got no power, no leverage, and you go nowhere. So then you come back. Get a little three wide look there, getting a little daring. Two drops back, and instantly there's pressure, and he's got to roll out now. He should have delivered this one. This is one of the balls. It wasn't an easy play, but he should have delivered this one. But notice the pressure here inside. Look at look at Jackson. Look at Jackson. You'll say, "Oh, Davis is giving it up." But this, you got to remember, riding the defensive end around the horn, even if it's a foot or two behind the quarterback, this is okay. This is not, you know, the best thing in the world, but it's expected. The quarterback is then expected to have a clean pocket to step into. Look at that. That is destruction. So if he could have stepped up into the pocket, he could have hit Waddle coming across. And he wouldn't have been on the move for that. He would have had options. Now the, now the Titans are starting to feel himself. Now they say, you know what? We saw this on tape. These guys, oh, the 45th best offensive line in football. We're just going to ride with nickel all day, no matter what they bring out. So now we're in big and they're in nickel. And you're going to watch this run all, pretty much all day from now on. Watch double on the inside tackles. A little inside handoff goes nowhere. Bang. Pff, forget it. They just stopped us with a nickel. Look at this. Look at this. Look at, look at, look at this. Got two safeties and maybe a corner inside. <laughs> You've got, look at this. You run the ball inside and you got a double. You have three guys on 93, two guys on 95, five guys on two Titan defenders. <laughs> and, get, and Smythe gets thrown to the ground and no way you can run. That is a stark difference. I mean, look, look at this again. They're in a nickel. We got two tight ends. Look at this, 93. Sucks up three blocks. 95's got Davis and Hunt. Smythe's on the ground. Phillips, where's he going to go? Nowhere. And you're going to talk about anything, anything about this offensive line. All right, so here we go. We're back in. We're getting serious now, man. Four wides. Who are you drawing to? Look at the coverage. That is tight coverage. What what is to his boss to do? What, I mean, even Parker, it's a tough, that was great coverage, man. Where is he supposed to go with that? Look at this. That is absolutely tight coverage. You can't blame anyone on that except <laughs> saying good job by the corner. So now you're where you at. Third and long. Third and long on a rainy day. And you've got, what do you got? You've got three receivers and two tight ends, one on the backfield. And they got like that dime out there. Here we go. Bang. Look at this. Look. Before he can even set, there's penetration. So what is, he, what is he supposed to do on that? And here's Kinley. So people will say, and you know, I, I'm kind of on it too. Like, we've got to get rid of Jackson. It's worse behind Jackson if it's possible. Watch this. Remember the stunt issue that we had with Jackson? Look, Kinley, he's, he can't block. He's too big. He's got two short arms. And what he does is he head dips to bang like a rhino. But when he does that, you lose all your leverage, the location. They swap. And that's it. What is Tua supposed to do on that one? Nothing he can do. So that's three drives. And maybe you say Tua could have hit that rollout. But so far, this is just we can't run on nickel and we can't protect. So seven, nothing. So what do we got over here? Dolphins come back. They got the big look. And guess what? Two tight ends, seven big bodies, and what do the Titans do? 
They cran the box with two linebackers and it looks like two small safeties and a safety in the corner. They got to play action, and no one's buying. You got three guys dropping, and you got six guys in coverage. Who do you throw to? Who do you throw to? Where's this ball going? Nowhere. He just throws it away. Where are you going to throw? Where are you going to throw the ball on this one? What's open? What's open? Nothing. And that's how you open your first down. Now you're in second and ten. You can't run on a nickel out of two tight ends on first down to at least give yourself, you know, uh, second and seven. And second down and long, they're still in the nickel, and you're in your big package with two tight ends, and you're going to go for your little pass. Can't run the football, and then Tua drops it, which, you know, it's not good. And that really hurt. That was a big dent. That's a big opt. I mean, it's a bad play, but it's very bad for optics. And so now you're down 10 nothing. Like the uh, you run against the nickel. We got a big look, and they got the nickel. And look at this. Jackson does a pretty decent job, but not long enough. 24 comes in and shoots. Duke does a great job breaking a tackle, and you pick up a good yardage on the run. Titans nervous. Nope. They're in a nickel, and they come back. We come back in the big. Hand the ball off again. Look at this. Who would have thunk? And you get the doubles inside and actually open some stuff up. Nice block by Smythe. Of course, Jackson's on the ground. And Duke does a good job running, but that's a big, big hole. But it's too tight in set going against nickel. Are the Titans scared? Do the Titans look like they're nervous? They stay in the nickel, and we stay in two tight end set. And what do we do? We just cracked off two long runs. Run it again, but look what happens. Look at this. Look how many guys we have in a box compared to what they got. All right, you got to do the double. You got to do the double. Phillips should have just hit it right up, but he does the same thing. He bends it out instead of sticking his nose in there. And run straight forward. He goes to parallel to the line of scrimmage almost, and he doesn't really get much. Jackson again and Eichenberg on a double. And he splits it. And Eichenberg, who should have peeled off, got to the next level camp because he's attached, because the two of them can barely handle what they can handle. And that's that. Look at it. Just, just understand how poor this is. They're in a nickel on a rain-swept field in two tight end sets. They got to take four offensive linemen to double, two D tackles, and your first overall pick and another player you spent a second and third take on one guy, and Jackson gets tossed. He splits it and forces Eichenberg to stay attached. And then Lindsay's got to bounce it out, and there's just free guys everywhere out of the nickel. This, you cannot win. It's impossible. It's impossible to win a game against a quality team, a balanced team, a healthy team this way. It's impossible. On second down, we throw it. Phillips picks up a good play. Now, the bot snap killed us because it was a short. It was third and short. Tua should not have dropped that ball. But in the grand course of the game, it means nothing because we pick up the first down. He cannot do this. He's got to learn to wear a glove. They stay in the nickel, and we're still in the two tight end look. Now we go to our pass, and look at this. Where is he supposed to go? They little play action inside. They get a little bit of biting on it, but Smythe can't hold the block. And so, too, it really has no time to go to another read which could have been Gusecki open in the middle, but he'll never get that chance, so he had to dump it. And it was a very tough catch, but it was catchable. It was in the area, but Waddle couldn't pull it in because good coverage. Hand looked a little bit held on that one. So now, what do the Dolphins do? All right, so you now you're in second and 10. It's not the end of the world. But look at this call. They run the screen to nowhere. Terrible play call. Stupid play call. 
The OCs called a call, and the Titans had the perfect defense cover, but they've been covering it all day. They're not playing man. They're not biting. It's a terrible call. So then what do you do? Run inside. You get a little bit. But this has nothing to do with Duke or we're a good run blockers. Look, look what they got here. Look where we run. Titans are saying, okay, we'll give you a five-yard run. Right, so we come back. Dolphins come out. They're passing against the dime with two tight ends set. A two tight end set passing against the dime. And they're doing a play action as if it matters. And you got to keep how many people in the block? One, two, three, four, five, six. And they're dropping one, two, three, four. They're dropping six against three receivers. Exactly how is he supposed to get in there? It was a nice play. How, he can't throw it. He can't throw it in front of uh, Gusecki because the receiver's there. He could pick it off. I mean, the defender's there. He could pick it off. So it's the only place he could put it. So they decide to come out. They get a little heavy. They get a 4-3 look on the second down. We got two tight end look. Little draw here. And what do you get? Hunt on the ground. Dita getting blown up. Nothing. That's when they want to stop the run. That's what you get. All right. So you got the Dolphins and two tight ends set on a rain slick field running against the nickel. So we come back to a pass play and delivers. Two of delivers. Nice little out route there. See how that develops. So we get a little crazy here. We got a full wide receiver look. But watch, watch the protection. Uh, you get a swap. I let us. Jackson again is so busy helping Aguiberg, he misses his gap. And two has got to basically what we saw the last time. He, he bites too hard inside on the swap. He bites too hard inside on the swap and he creates a lane for the Russia. You got the first down. We're going four wides. And so watch this. He's. Instantly, Jackson's holding, okay? And there's where the pressure comes in. Dieter and Hunt really can't maintain, so there's no pocket for him to step up in, so he's got to roll out, and look at his pass, and look at that catch. That's a very nice pass and catch. And, you know, again, here's, here's the, the announcers saying, you know, he almost threw a pick two times in a row. It was total pass interference on Parker. I mean, total. I mean, I don't know if that was like still a good throw. I don't think it was a good throw, a good choice. You know, but that was absolutely pass interference. I mean, watch. Look at this. The corner, 10 yards down the field. You, you can't do that. That's, that's not acceptable. You know, and Parker's fighting to get to his position. You can't put your hands like that. And then even if you look, 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 right, right here, the ball's being thrown. And look at Gusecki being held, physically held. You can't do that. He's not even looking at the ball. There was two pass interference calls. Look at this. Look at this. He's in his face, blocking his path. <laughs> and there's no call. Now, I don't believe the refs determine this game. But I believe the NFL refs are some of the worst refs in all of sports, and that was a terrible, terrible no call. Two no calls. Come back. They're in a nickel. And this was definitely his fault. I don't know how he can throw to two guys in one zone. That was just too much. He should have just dumped it off to the runner. And this is on Tua. He's got a seat at this. Four defenders there, and he knows there's two routes in that zone. He's got to bring his eyes back to the other side. Really, Tua needed to, you know, Tua needed to be smart here and not try to take it all at once. He should have just dumped it off to the runner. This is just not the ball you want to throw. Yeah, that was an off pass. We see he's trying to protect his legs, and that's why the ball goes off. He's trying to protect himself and not step into it. 
And the ball's a little off. Didn't matter. That was going to be a penalty. This offensive line is an utter disaster. There's no way, as I've said before, that what you saw on film should happen. The only reason it does. And it, what makes it worse is we've invested so much capital into it. And this is Chris Greer, maybe Marvin Allen, their staff, whoever. Brian Flores might be hard to get along with. Maybe he's just a good defensive coordinator. That's for another day. But the bottom line is he's an employee of Chris Greer. He has influence. Greer sat down in an interview with him. I got to get the tape. And he said, yeah, you know, I try to get the coach what he needs. That's it. He's not a partner. He doesn't have say. So... For me, no coach can succeed without an offensive line. It's the most critical unit in the game, and this unit is the 45th best offensive line in football. And there's nothing else that should be talked about except how bad they are and who the architect is. Coaching, we had Marshall last year, Gailey, much better than we had this year, but we also had Flowers and Karras. Look how they're playing. There is a level where coaching could have lifted this unit up, better coaching, but there's only so much you can lift this lack of talent and players that are not suited for the roles they're given. So I hope you enjoyed the film. I look forward to hearing your comments. Please like, comment, subscribe. Sorry, I'm a little tired, man. I haven't slept in a couple of days and seen my kids to do this tape. Like to have finished the whole thing, but man, I can't. I'm fried. I'm old and fried. So, but I hope you enjoyed. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you get something out of it. So this is Curtis saying, be well. Catch you next time. Bookies can earn hundreds to thousands of dollars from booking action with aceperhead.com.